What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video, man. And it's been a minute since I've done a movie review. It's been probably, I want to say, the last time I've done a movie review was maybe 2020. It had to be. But it's been a little minute. I know the theaters have been closed for the most part. So no one's really been able to go to the movie theaters. And, you know, no real new movies have came out that, for me, was just, like, noteworthy to make a react, like, a review to. But I did get a chance to check out Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League last night on HBO Max. And I'm not going to lie to you. I enjoyed it. For it to be a four-hour movie... I was thoroughly entertained and I'm glad that Zack Snyder was finally able to release his version of Justice League. And I want to I want to say it's it's all in part just because of people really getting behind the hashtag release Zack Snyder cut because he deserved to have his vision of the film seen. And you can clearly tell that he cared a lot about making this movie the best possible justice league movie best possible superhero movie he could possibly come up with and i enjoyed it um, my thoughts may be kind of all over the place i'm not really going to go in into complete order i'm going to try to keep it spoiler free as possible only because i want people to see if you haven't seen it already like some of the changes and and there's some there's some different story beats i mean if you've seen the josh whedon justice league you know how it ends but there's certain stuff that i don't want to spoil for you guys just so you guys can have a chance to check it out so if you don't have hbo max i definitely would subscribe to it it is worth your money just off the strength of it there's also some pretty other entertaining shows on hbo max but just just to see this in the comfort of your home and enjoy it for what it is, I think it's worth subscribing to HBO Max for. So, I want to first and foremost talk about the character developments within this movie. It's like night and day compared to the Josh Whedon version. Um, the characters are more fleshed out. I, mean, I would hope it's fleshed out if it's a four hour movie, but they're definitely more fleshed out in a sense you get an understanding of the newer characters like uh, Cyborg and Flash being introduced and also, also Aquaman. You get a, a better understanding of who, it, who they are and their backstory. Not going to lie to you. If you watch the Josh Whedon uh, version of Justice League, you remember how Cyborg was just he was just there. Like, you really didn't get a introduction to who he is, in a sense. Like, you just knew he was Cyborg, and his dad created him. You didn't really get an understanding of why he was, why he, he feels the way he feels, why his mannerisms are, what they are, and they really dive deep into his backstory. And honestly, he is the anchor of the film. And I'm so confused on how he's the central point of the film in the Zack Snyder cut, but somehow in the Josh Whedon version, he's he's like a side note. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that really ties them together in the Josh Whedon version is, of course, this the material, the one in the mother boxes was used to create him, to power him up. So that's it. But in this in this iteration of it, it's he's more important to the story than he has ever been. He's literally the anchor of the story. And I love it. it. You know, you really get to see the actors like acting chops like you really get to go on this emotional ride with him. So I'm all for it. Same way with Barry Allen the flash like it you really dive deep dive deep into who he is and, and how he operates in the josh whedon version they just kind of made him so timid and scary but in this version he has he's a little bit timid but he knows he can he's he's very powerful like he's actually even towards the end of the film not going to spoil it for you he's very important he's an important piece to how the story ends in the movie he, and they they show how strong his power is they, he actually uses his power more than just to push people to run away like he was quoted and saying in the josh whedon version so honestly i love the character development um aquaman's character development he's not just this 
dude that says one quick liners and then that's it and drink whiskey he actually has they dive into his psyche his backstory and why does he feel the way he feels about his people you know what i'm saying and i i like that dynamic he's he's not just a one-line joke and then of course Diana, Princess Diana and Batman, they've already kind of been centralized in the story from the previous movie. So you kind of already get their motivations and how they move around and how they operate within the universe. So it was just good to see the new characters get fleshed out. What I've always preferred that they had their own single movies, kind of like what Marvel did where all these characters had their own single movies so you had a better chance to get to know them a little bit better. Of course, I would have liked that route, but in this context of how this was filmed and spaced out, it works. You get their backstories, you get an understanding of who they are and how they will fit within the team, and I like that, man. So character development is very important in caring about your superheroes because if you don't care about them, it doesn't really matter, man. Um, I also like how they did superman granted superman doesn't really show up towards the end of the movie but i love just how they really addressed him you know what i'm saying how they really made him just this 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 larger than life being when they brought him back to life i love that that whole little sequence when he's fighting when he first gets comes back to life and he's fighting the rest of the justice league he doesn't know what's going on I like that scene because they extended even more. It, it's actually quite entertaining, bro. I love the fact that he uses the black Superman suit towards the end of the film. Like he's he's constantly in the black Superman suit. They they're teasing some things with him. I just I love it, bro. Like they really did the characters justice. No pun intended in this uh in, in this particular version of the film. Um. I do like the action scenes. The action scenes seem more like, I guess you can say, actiony, if that's a word you want would want to use. But it, it, I don't know. I can't even describe it in the sense of when you watch it in the original Josh Whedon version. The action scenes it just was like, oh, that's that's another action set piece. Oh, that's crazy. That's it. It, it didn't seem important. And this one is seen because they, they built up these characters. They built up these scenarios. It seemed more important. Like, it, it was just more impactful. Like, it seemed like there's a lot more stakes here. You know, even though you know how the story is going to end, it's just how they build it up to these set pieces. It, it was more enjoyable. Like, the action was more enjoyable. It looked better. The color grading on this is way better than what it was in the josh whedon film i felt like it was it was just it was just a splash of color just for the sake of putting color on the screen but in this film it made sense to how things was looking the action looked great um the movie is is rated r and of course the some characters are you know cursing using the hard hard uh the hard f you know saying certain curse words and it makes sense when the concept context of the story um there is some blood which would make sense also if you know if you guys remember the um the scene with Diana fighting, you know, going against some people, you know, that was about to pretty much massacre some people in this building or whatnot. Uh, and she goes in there and saves everyone. She stops all the gunmen. Then, like, when she's throwing people around at full force and they're hitting the wall, you see blood. Like, their, their blood splatting on the wall. It was a nice little touch. Like I said, it's not gratuitous violence for the sake of uh, R rating, but it makes sense. So, it, it gives it that real world setting. Uh, I'm, like I said, it's such attention to detail. The small things matter in this film. They also introduce another superhero. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You guys got to check it out. But they do introduce another superhero leading into potentially hope or some hopefully some future movies um and i want to talk about stefan wolf stefan wolf outside of the other characters getting a major like buff and not a buff because obviously this was the original movie so this was supposed to be released but the characters you know really getting that background information on them like their their development being created stefan wolf is just the same like he's not just a a mindless cgi villain no like in this movie 
I like his armor tech on him. Like he looks menacing and he's brutal and he's violent, but he has a reason for what he's doing. It's not just because he's doing it for dark side. There's a extra reason why he's doing it. And I enjoy it so much on how they even flesh out his backstory. And he's a formidable villain. Like the dude does, he's here to do a mission. He doesn't care who he kill or who he hurts in the process and they show it and i love that i thought that was a nice touch they made the villain actually seem scary now i will say the overall villain in dark side actually seeing him on the screen his presence fantastic bro i mean if there was any way to set up a universe we all got hyped at the at the end of uh, the first avengers and we saw thanos this is that times two like dark side makes appearances multiple times in the film and bruh it even works they even change how if you guys remember and you know it's not really much of a spoiler but they change how you guys remember diana's telling uh batman the story of how the human race came together to fight well it wasn't to fight stefan wolf it was to fight um it was to fight uh dark side dark side actually came to earth many many years ago and you had the gods like zeus Ares, the atlanteans the, the amazonians and the humans all come together to fight fight dark side from taking over the planet bro and it was fan that whole scene is extended even longer than what it was in the actual josh whedon version of the movie it's extended and it's it's one of the best early action pieces action scenes in the movie bro that whole segment was so dope just to see dark side in action because they if you guys remember it was really just stefan wolf but it was supposed to be dark side as the guy that came to earth and this was the one planet that he couldn't take over and i love that bro it was it was fantastic like i said you definitely got to check it out just for the visuals alone the visuals are enhanced and it looks so much better in this movie than it did in Josh Whedon's version of it. Um, but other than that, man, I really can't go into too much detail other than this movie is enjoyable. I think some. Uh, I think towards the end of the movie, there's an extra scene I think you guys will enjoy as well. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil it, but it does tease a potential actual universe with these characters and i hope that they're able to do something to find a way to get Zack snyder back on board to find a way to get henry cavill back on board to find a way to get ben affleck back on board like we need to get these guys back together in the Zack snyder universe needs to happen because this is the perfect time for it to happen they don't they don't have to compete with marvel marvel is you know they're working on their next phase but they don't have to compete with marvel right now they don't this is the perfect time for them to really capitalize on creating this universe and actually just fleshing it out i'm be honest with you joss whedon's version of this movie is is non-existent to me anymore i don't think anyone in their right mind, will watch the Josh Whedon version of Justice League when they see Zack Snyder's version. I, I can't see how you would. Honest, honestly, it, it's it's really it would be a waste of your time, and it would be no point in doing that. Honestly, if you get a chance to check this film out and you've seen the original Justice League and you was disappointed, I think you will at least come out enjoying more of this movie than you probably ever would have with the original justice league and i'm i'm a stand i make my standpoint on this i feel like if this original version was released in theaters i think the universe the the dec i said dec d the um dc comic universe would have probably been it would have flourished a lot better because that justice league movie put a lot of people off to the the dceu they was like i'm done with this like they can't get it together i don't really care i'm just only watch the uh, dc animated uh animated series of their of their content because movie wise they don't got it they can't get it together they're inconsistent i think if they would have had if this version would have came out i think a lot of more people would have been more excited to see what Zack snyder can possibly come up with because the way this movie ends there's so many other movies they could 
possibly create just from this movie's ending, bro. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil it, but if you watch the movie, you'll understand exactly what beats I'm talking about. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys got a chance to check out the Zack Snyder cut of this movie and if you guys enjoyed it let me know down below let's try to not spoil the movie as much as possible you know what i'm saying just you know give me your general thoughts on what you enjoy uh, most about this version of the movie if you enjoyed it at all and let me know i would love to get your feedback and let's start a discussion in the comment section but i appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace